In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And for today's Chaplain Report, as I actually just mentioned, and I didn't even plan to mention it in that segment, it just kind of popped into my head in the spur of the moment. I recently finished reading Deuteronomy, and at the last chapters of Deuteronomy, Moses is wrapping up his talk about the law because he's been going on for five books now, making sure that the law is preserved, and that law includes narrative, it includes stories about Israel's history, and that it also has the things that you would kind of expect in a law book, different rules, different commandments, things not to do, things that you should do. And so despite the fact that the Torah, all five of them are books of the law, there's actually quite a bit of variety in them, and he's kind of wrapping them up and trying to, to tie this thing into a bow so that they understand what the thrust of it is. And so he does that in the later chapters in Deuteronomy, partly because he knows that his work is about to finish, and also because... He knows that his death is, is very near. Moses understands, because God has already told him ahead of time, that his death is coming, and so he wants to give Israel something to hang on to, sort of a summary to say, look, this is what all of this means. This is it coming to a head. And one aspect, not the only aspect, but one aspect that plays into this, I think is very eloquently described in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 11 through 14 which says, For this commandment which I command you, this, uh, command you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross the sea for us to get, for, uh, get it for us, and make us hear it, that we may observe it. But the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may observe it. There's a couple reasons why this verse is so astounding. First of all, it's so unlike the religion of all of the people surrounding them. Because if you look at ancient writings, ancient literature... To get the boon or the revelation from God, there was quite a bit involved in that. So, for example, if you're one of these pagan religions, you have to be some kind of great hero and, and go on these big epic quests. And the word of God was reserved for a select few. There were only a handful of priests or members of the royal family or, or whatever system that they had that were allowed to know what the will of God was, and the average person just kind of had to take it on their word that that's really what it said. That's not what Moses did. And this was the system, he was just implementing the idea that God had, which is the word of God is for everyone. That it's not something that should be held only by the Levites or by the priest or by the royal family. That this is something that should go out into the world because this is for the whole of my people. It's for you and for you and for you. This isn't something that we're going to keep locked up and you have to take people's word on it. You should be able to go and read the word. Now, they didn't have nearly the infrastructure that we do today, obviously. They didn't have their Torah on some kind of app in their phone. They had to actually go to a temple or go to a place that had a copy of it. But the idea was always transparency. The idea was always you have this intimacy with you and God and an intimacy with you and the Word. I think sometimes that we mean well. We are describing the relationship that God always intended to have with the children of Israel incorrectly as Christians. Because, yes, there is a level of intimacy and closeness that we have now that the children of Israel simply didn't under the old law. That is accurate. That is in accordance with the Scripture and what it teaches. However, the idea that the God of the Old Testament was this faraway figure that only existed on Mount Sinai 
and handed down edicts and then left Israel to do their own thing and didn't care about the personal relationships with the children and the everyday person in Israel is simply not rooted in truth. I'm not saying that we're not closer now than we were then, but I am saying the idea that there was a lot of distance between God and that's what he wanted and he wanted there to uh, not be the transparency of having his word as a standard and, and not having that close-knit relationship with his people, that's something that God never wanted. In fact, that's something that God often complains about, is that Israel moves away from him and treats it as though this is something that they can't understand. See, this is the significance of this verse. There was not a religion in the world of this day that said, no, no, you're smart enough to get this. The words are in your heart. All you have to do is read them and follow them. And you have access to it any time that you want to. You can be godly. You can be closer to God by doing these things. You see, so many other ancient societies and ancient religions treated the average person as though they were insignificant. I mean, if you were Pharaoh, you were considered one of the gods, but if you were the peasant, you were kind of just God's plaything. Look at the Odyssey, for example. Odysseus does have favor with some gods and has the wrath of others, like Neptune. Or, you know, in the Greek, it would have been Poseidon, but regardless... Really, they're just kind of a cork tossed about in a stormy sea. They don't really have control over where they're going. The gods either help them or mess with them and because they don't like them. But they don't have a relationship with them, at least not one that is being described here. And there's not that big epic quest or anything. Just do the things that the Torah demands of you. That's all Moses is saying. He's saying... If you learn these words, if you learn the Torah, if you understand the will of God, and then you go forth and do them, you have that close-knit relationship with God, too. And then, of course, that was made even closer and even more intimate with the coming of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who destroyed the partition between man and God. In ancient Israel, of course, that partition was the, the big curtain that came between the holy and the holiest place, the holy of holies. And that, of course, was rent, literally, when Jesus Christ died on the cross. So we do have that intimate connection with him now through his son. But even back then, God always wanted intimacy with his children. He wanted love and compassion flowing between the two of them. That was always God's design. Because remember that the God of the New Testament is the same God. He wants that today just like he wanted it two, 3,000 years ago. Back when this was being written, you know, almost 5,000 years ago, when you, you see the earliest stories of Abraham and, and God wanting him to charge out into the world, ultimately that's what God wanted. You see, because if we didn't have a God that wanted that, that didn't want us to be near him and to be like him and to want to imitate him and to love him, then there'd be no purpose in having mankind anyway. Ultimately, we were created to be loved by God and also to love him back. That's the whole reason that we're here, is because God wanted to have that kind of relationship with us. He wanted it with Moses and the children of Israel at his time, and he wants us with us today. So let's make sure that we do the best that we can to please God and remember that he's never far off. That as long as his words are with us, just like with the children of Israel, as long as the Torah and the law we're with them. We don't have to go on some big epic adventure to find it. It's right here. It's provided for us. God is waiting for us wherever we are right now. And he wants that level of closeness with us. And I think even more importantly, he wants us to want that too. To come to him and, and to want that kind of relationship with him. Ultimately, that's the whole duty of man. Stay the course, friends. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.